You're tuned in to another fantastic edition of Hall of Fame right here on City TV with yours truly, AJ Sapon. Special thanks to First Choice for my lovely hair, R. Louis for my outfit, and Fabric by Kimimi Fabrics. Find them on social media, but going straight into my guest for today. I first met him um, years ago when he was then a duo. He went on to become one of the first Ghanaians, actually the only Ghanaian to win a Channel O. He's been covered by Force magazine. He has been nominated from here to South Africa to the UK and back. He has uh, then transcended from being just a musician to becoming a record label boss. Not only that, he's created businesses in the hospitality industry and has been nominated. I believe he won or so for 40 and 40 under hospitality. He is someone that I'm really excited to have a conversation with. I've been trying to get him on the couch for quite a while. The one and only yes boss, D Black, is in the studios. Hi, D Black. Hello. Do you like that intro? Yeah. Or, or you think I, I left some things out? <laughs> Very solid. Thank you. It's nice to have you in the studio. Thank you for having uh, me. Let's get straight into it and starting off from the beginning. Um, how was your entry into the Ghanaian music industry? Okay, so um, when I was like 17, ah. I used to go to this studio in North Kanishi. Okay. Near where I grew up. And I met like... Hammer or Brafo, Quark, I said Tiny. Everybody was trying to make it at the time, mm. you know, and um, they all made it. But then I went to school. But I was still, in my mind, I was still trying to be an artist. Mm. So I kept leaving boarding school <laughs> in the Eastern region. And come back to Accra. I come back to Accra to try and record. Oh, wow. So that whole period went, I finally got kicked out of school. You did? Yeah, because I got caught so many times leaving the boarding house. So I got kicked out of school. I didn't write my final SSC. No. So I wrote no deck. Okay. So then, yeah, my family was cool because I passed. I went to university. Mm -hmm. I kept doing the same thing. I was in university at Cape Coast. I kept you coming come back, back to Accra car to record. I met different people, but <clears throat> it didn't work out till I finished university. Okay. When I finished... The next day, I released a song. At that point, I, was, I, had, I had teamed up with um, Kwekuti, and we formed a group. I think I was 21 at the time. Mm. We formed a group. We called ourselves Deep Black and Kwekuti. Deep Black and Kwekuti. Yeah, and um, we, we, we managed to put money together. I remember mm. our video cost us 300 cities. Charlie? At the time. We shot the video with Daniel Kwashiga, and then it got nominated for the Channel Awards. Uh, Geo Famous Films. Uh, I was a producer, sound engineer in Laboni called Waxi, mm -hmm. who gave us studio time and said he believed that I was going to be a big star one day, wow. even though I didn't have the money. Okay. I should record. And when I make it, I should see him after that. So he made me record over 30 songs. Hmm. That's where everything started. I started promoting the songs. I was rapping in English. So I always tried to do songs with people who could sing. Yeah. In Chi okay. or Ga. On the hooks and the choruses. And then one worked. The one with Kwapna Kwapna worked in 2010. Mm -hmm. um, it was called Somebody. Yeah. I shot the video in a church. I remember that. It, 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 was, it was really nice. Yeah. At that point in time, I was wondering, wow, a church. Like, being able to shoot in a church at that point was a novelty. Yeah. So we shot that in a church. And I did a second one called Get on the Dance Floor. Mm -hmm. This is after the 30 songs that God made me record. Okay. Then I, I put all the songs together. I chose my favorite 17, and I did an album. Hmm. And at that time, hip-hop in Ghana wasn't really a big thing. Damn but right. I got nominated for the BETs off that album. I got nominated for Channel O's, MTV's. Then Ghana Music Awards, and that's where everything started from. Okay, so I'm still going to bring it back a bit uh, to when you became, you started off doing it with Kweku T. At that point in time, you had been trying on your own. Why did you decide that, okay, teaming up <coughs> with Kweku T will be what will work for me? Because we didn't have money. <laughs> okay. We were broke. I couldn't promote my stuff. He couldn't promote his stuff. So let's say it cost 
thousand cities to promote whatever we we're doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't have thousand. He didn't have thousand. But maybe I had three fifty. <laughs> he also had three fifty. <laughs> so we decided that if we put our songs together and feature each other on our songs and do a project, and I bring my three fifty, he brings his three fifty, and later on we bring hundred hundred and add. It will we'll, get somewhere. We'll get somewhere, okay. and then we could go back and do our solo things. So that's what we did, and, and it worked for us. So we called that project Target Practice. Okay. Like we're, we're trying to reach a goal. So this was the practice to be able to get to that point. So after about a year and like three months, we went back to doing our solo things. So did you just have an uh, understanding that it will be probably one big project that we can go back to our own thing? No, we just said, let's do it and see how it goes. Okay. When it, whatever happens, we'll go back to our solo stuff. So it got to a point, he said, yo, let's do our solo projects and I said okay cool let's do it okay so he decided that it was time for you two to focus yeah, on your own thing yeah. but you were getting some notable successes as a duo mm -hmm. so why decide to spoil what is already really good um I don't know it was just it just happened <laughs> we just decided let's go do our solo thing and I started working on that album I met that person who gave me a studio to to work in and he was also working somewhere else and it just happened, like it wasn't like a, and you see when you say success, we're actually getting some radio play, yeah. TV play, but we're not making any money. Okay. Zero. I think we only got paid for one show that whole period. Wow. Yeah. Just one. Just one. Basta Rams in Ghana. <laughs> Tata House. Okay. 2000 Ghana. i never forget. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now the two of you decide to go your separate ways and then you start your own solo project. You get the one with Kwabna Kwabna getting some massive airplay and starts mm -hmm. to get you nominated for things. Um, describe that process or that period of time for us. I was I was I was a hundred percent dedicated to making sure that this happened for me. Mm. I I didn't want to go work in an office or a bank or none of that. I wanted to create music. I wanted to be a part of the entertainment industry. And I knew this was the gate. This was a passion that I had, so I knew I had to make it work. Okay. So every day of my life, I was focused on creating the music and promoting the music. So um, Geo, a famous film, shot a video for me. I saved up all the money I had. I shot another one. I flew to South Africa for the World Cup to promote my music into that market. I went to the Channel O Awards. Every single year I was nominated. Mm. Even though I didn't win, I met all these people. I met Two Face, I met The Bonds, I met all these people. I started creating music with them, and becoming friends with them, promoting my music as hard as I can, and it paid off. Mm. You know, I went, I did a whole nationwide tour off just two songs. Wow. Like, I went from Quill, I did a show in Quill. Okay. I took all my artist friends. We were lucky, the first show was sponsored. So all the money we made from that, I went and paid for venues in Takrari, Cape Coast, Tamale, Bogatanga, mm. Sunyane, everywhere. And I went to 10 cities. Myself, at that time, we're all not big artists. I, I went with uh, Sarko Dier okay. to about three. I went with Efia to about four. Stage J, Trigmatic, Rough and Smooth, okay. Yapuno, D-Crime, everywhere. At that time, the girls were dying over D-Crime, <laughs> so he was always the last person to come on stage. The girls would be crying and <laughs> girls would be fainting. And so we went, we went, the biggest show we had was in Tamale because we had gained so much momentum in all the other cities. That Tamale was the last one and they changed it to the stadium. It was just a regular venue. And they said, no, we got to do this at the stadium. So by the time we finished that show, we made a lot of money from it. Okay. Everybody got paid. Then I got nominated for the BETs. And then they told us that you had to fund your own trip. Wow. So, if I hadn't done that tour, I don't know how I'd have been you able to do it. You don't meet girls with BTs. So that tour made me get money to be able to set up my own studio. And then I started working on the second album. That's when I did Vera. Yes. And all those songs. Okay, now let's come to Vera. What was, was there a particular girl called Vera? Or was it just some kind of inspiration? How did that song come about? Okay, so there's two things. Vera was, uh, it was a true story. I just... The person wasn't called Vera. Okay. I just picked that name. Actually, the producer who, who did the beat wanted us to use like a, a local name. So okay. we were in the studio, we were playing around with names that 
were really common in Ghana. So we chose Vera. Yeah. <laughs> so I laid the chorus, and I went for a show in Johannesburg with Roger Rockstar. And at that time, I'd become big, you know? I was, I was a star. Yeah. So I, I went for a show with him there, and he said, okay, so you're, you're popular in Ghana, but you haven't touched the masses. Mm. You haven't, like, they can't rap along to what you're saying because it's English, and not everybody can understand this, your slangs, and blah, blah, blah. And he had the same issue when he came to Ghana and had to switch to tree. Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't have a firm enough grasp of the tree language to be able to rap in tree. So he said I should let Sarkodia write something for me. Okay. I said, nobody can write for me. I'm not going to rap nobody's raps. Wow. I said, okay, can I do pigeon? And I said, yeah, I can write pigeon. Pigeon is easy. I can, I can do pigeon. I treat maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm into, yeah, yeah, <laughs> So he said he was going to go visit his friends. He's going to go do, he's doing a commercial for Glow. Mm -hmm. So he was going to go shoot. And that's like my big brother. So he gave me a task. I think I was like 24 at the time or 25. He said, write a song in Pigeon before I come back. Okay. Then I wrote there. So I was looking through the beats and stuff that I'd done back home. And I, I heard the Vera song that I did, but I, I'd done the chorus and I started writing it in English. Mm. So I just translated everything. Into Pigeon into Pigeon. And when he came, I was like, oh, I did it. And then I rapped it for him. I was like, ah, oh, it's good. So as soon as I got back to Ghana, that night, I recorded it. And I hmm. think I released it like three days after. And then, and then it blew and up. And then it blew up. Did you expect the amount of hype and feedback that no, came? No, I didn't. Hmm. I didn't, listen, I, I didn't even believe that, you know, that's not really my type of music. Yes, okay. So I didn't even do an artwork for it. It was just like, okay, let's see how people take it. I just put it on Facebook and I didn't even do CDs and stuff for it. Wow. I just put it there and then it just went boom. Now let's talk about the video of Fair, which also generated quite a bit of buzz. Uh, was it, like, tell me the process that went into creating the Vera video. Okay, so I scripted the whole video myself. Okay. That's what I studied in school. I studied film. So I scripted the whole video myself, and I wanted to direct it myself. Mm -hmm. But then I met this guy called Pascal Aka, who was new to the scene, and I liked his work. So I took my script to him, and I wanted to use a particular camera. I okay. bought a particular camera I wanted to use for the video. So I took the camera and the script to him, and I said I wanted him to direct this script for this music video. So I took it to him, and then I found the perfect girl I wanted to use for the video. Okay. Yeah, and then we shot it, and that also went boom. <laughs> All right. We shot it at, uh, we shot on Legon Campus. Yeah. We shot in like a house in West Legon somewhere. And the girl, she became very popular too. She did. She became known as Vera Girl. Yeah, and yeah, that was, that was a great time. <laughs> In 2013 or 2012. Now yeah. describe how the success of Vera launched you into even more projects. Vera changed my whole life. You know, I I I, I performed in like everywhere. Hmm. I performed places I hadn't even dreamed that I was gonna go perform. Performed in Spain, Amsterdam. Wow. I did my own show in London at the O2. Wow. In the States, Nigeria, Dubai, South Africa. I performed on the Channel O Awards. Funny enough, I did when I even performed on the channel. I was they didn't even let me perform there. I performed a different song that was on that album. Okay. Different places, like I went all over the world. I made a lot of money from the music. I invested it back in different things, and that's what really started the cash flow. Okay. For me to be able to do other things with. Now, after the success of Vera, what happened? What was next in that next year for D Black? Okay, so after that, I signed um, Joey B okay. to the label, and then we did his whole album, and then Tonga became big. He did. <laughs> yeah, and then he also went on tour with me in Europe and London and stuff. Then when I came back, um, I decided to start an events company mm. with the money I'd made from the music that year. So we started a company called Livewire Events, and we started with um, doing this event called Celebrity Soccer. Mm -hmm where all the celebrities 
will create their own football teams. And then come over and play. And then come over and play and then donate the money to any charity. Oh. So it was something that I was doing every year, personally. I was donating to charities every mm -hmm. year. So when all of these friends of mine came on board, it was a bigger, you know, initiative. We went to orphanages outside of Accra, they donated the Teshi Orphanage, the Kolibu Children's Ward, like different places. Yeah. And then I got back to the music again, and I started uh, working on my new album. At the time, I met Castro. Mm. And yeah. um, the first single that I picked off that album was featuring him. And then the first single he picked off his album he was working on was featuring me. And then we released both songs like three weeks apart. And it all became big. Mm. Like in that month, personal person in Seho. Yeah. Came really, really big. I remember the first chart where I saw personal person number one on and say her number two on was here on the City of yeah. chart. And and then and then Castro disappeared and then Describe how um Cash or how Castro's disappearance affected you. I took a break from music for like two years. Wow. It, more than two years after that. Because it, it, I, I just felt you know, like the songs were big, but then I felt very uncomfortable performing the songs when the person I did the songs with. You couldn't say whether he was dead. They couldn't find a body. So I just felt very uncomfortable. Mm. And then I just took a back seat from the music. I didn't release the album. I just left the songs. Wow. And then I started focusing on like other businesses. So that's when I started. Um, the TV production side, uh, we, we shot a movie mm -hmm. um, called Why Should I Get Married? And then we started a TV show. I produced the TV show. The host was Peace Hyde. Peace Hyde, yeah. That's the EFG show. And then in 2016, I started releasing music again. I released a song called Kotomoshi. And then I released an album okay. after that. All right, so with uh, coming or making your entrance back into music, describe how the hospitality angle began, transitioning from music to events and then TV and then now hospitality. Okay, so just before my second album, I went with the Castro song. Yeah. I got signed as a brand ambassador to Ciroc, um, PDD's vodka brand. Yeah. And as part of the contract, I had to tour with them in different places. I had to go do parties in like different cities. So I experienced nightlife in a lot of different places. Okay. And it just fascinated me how, like if I went to a club and I was drinking Sarat, everybody else would want to drink Sarat. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why? Then I realized that it was just celebrity influence. Hmm. You know, everybody was partying and wanted to drink what the celebrities were drinking. And then I went to other countries and I saw it happen in other countries. Then I started paying attention to the whole business of how clubs are run. And, and it, I really got interested. Okay. After my Sora contract ended, what even made it worse was that I got signed by Bel Air. Yeah. Too. So I was like, no, then. I got it. How much do you make from the Ciroc and Belair deals? I can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember? Was the money that good? Was yeah. it above six figures? No, it wasn't. It wasn't above six figures. Okay. Yeah. So was... This is 2013 and 2016. It okay. wasn't above six okay. figures. Okay. Well, it was five figures? Yeah. Dollar or CD? Yen, yen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just a spicy spice. It's like, oh. I, I really can't remember. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, but it was pretty good, huh? Yeah, it was, it, was, okay. it, was, it, was, it was fine. And so then I said, listen, put your everything into um, investing in, a, in the nightlife business. Okay. So I started building a club in 2016. Then I opened in 2017. Mm -hmm. Then I opened the lounge the year after, Oasis, and it's been really good. Okay. Then I go back to the music again, started releasing new music 
it's been a couple months since yeah. I started releasing the new yeah. music. I've seen it, like the one with Simi, and there's a whole lot of new music coming out from your stables, and I really like that. Now, with the club scene, is it an easy process running a club? Do you still, do you face challenges, and what are some of those? Every day. Describe some. Okay, so imagine that you, you come to the club, mm -hmm. and there's like 3,000 CDs in your pocket. Okay. And you, you that's your budget. Mm -hmm. And then you and your friends come. I'm talking like you're a guy. Yeah. So you and your friends. Oh, even as a chick, I can, yeah. yeah. I can ball till I fall. Okay. <laughs> till okay, you fall? So, <laughs> <laughs> so I have three K in my pocket. So uh -huh. you spend and then there's five of you guys. Mm -hmm. Then some girls walk in. Okay. And you want to impress, but there's okay. no money in your pocket. Okay. What do you do? I'm going to ask the boys to all contribute or the girls to all contribute so we impress the guy. Yes. And then sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Okay. So the customer speaks to management and says, oh, can I sign the bill and pay it tomorrow? Hmm. And then that tomorrow becomes next week. Wow. Becomes next two weeks. Becomes next three weeks. And then it's... It accumulates. Yeah. And it's not just one person. You know, it's different people. So and people then, come to your club and just free their drinks? No, 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 no. It's, I wouldn't say free. It's, it's called signing a tab. Okay. So they create tabs, but they never actually pay their no, tab. No, no, no. They pay. But what I'm saying is it becomes a week. Okay. It becomes two weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in the club business, when you or in my business, your profit is like between 40 to 50% of what you sell. Okay. So if somebody buys something for a thousand cities, that means you need to pay about five fifty. Okay. Wherever you got that from. drink okay. from. So if somebody delays in paying you, that means that you means you owe the someone. next person. Okay. So then it's also hectic trying to put all these things together. It's hectic paying a lot of people's salaries. Hmm. You know, then you have to market, you have to promote this competition. And you have to give your customers an experience that they won't have anywhere else, okay. which is why they will continue to come back. Mm. And I was new to the business, so it was a learning process, you know, and, and then you need your staff to be sharp. You need them to be able to do the math as quickly as some of the customers can. Mm. You need to keep your eye on making sure the place is clean, yeah. nothing is broken, everything is tidy, electricity is, is on, your standby generator is working, you know, your, your, your bathrooms are neat, they're clean, the place is looking good, you know, people are talking about your place, people are enjoying themselves, people are having a good time, you need great DJs. Whew. It's a lot yeah. that goes into it and, and it racks up. Yeah. How much do you make in a, in a day, in a night? I can't tell. Why? Oh, it's all, it's all different nights, you know. 50k, 20k, 100k. Are there differences in various nights? Yeah. Okay. The biggest night is Sunday night. I realized, okay. Yeah. And then Friday nights. So, it's is it a good thing to have a specific night that everyone comes to you? It's it's different target audiences. Okay. The Sunday audience is the more affluent. Okay. And the Friday night is the more affluent people. But then there's, on Friday night, there's a bit of university girls, university guys in the mix. And then Sunday night is more of the self-made okay. people and the ballers, you know? Okay, okay. And then Saturday is more for events and okay. private parties and chill. All right. Yeah. So it's all very different. Nights and every so mm -hmm. like... 100 key. Yeah, just about. Okay, I, I can... Wow, well, it's good to be a club owner. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe uh. my next life. <laughs> well, we're having a conversation with the one and only Desmond Blackmore, a.k.a. D. Black, label boss, hospitality connoisseur, and everything else inclusive. When I come back, I'll be asking him a bit more about life as the big boss, helping others become stars right here on the show. This is Hall of Fame. Don't go anywhere. 
You're tuning in to Hall of Fame right here on City TV. I'm having a conversation with incredible D Black and going straight back into the conversation, this time uh, as a label boss. So obviously your beginnings as a label boss started from recruiting Joey B into the stable and uh, tell DJ me... Breezy. Yeah, Tell me, and DJ Breezy, yeah, actually, who's, who's chalked a lot of successes under Black Avenue Music. Now, describe the creation of Black Avenue Music and when uh, you decide that, you know, I'm going to expand the reach and get more people on board. Okay, so Black Avenue Music started, like, just about when I became, like, a, an artist okay. and was on the radio and stuff. I created the label, and then Joy B was my next-door neighbor. Okay. So when I was recording Vera, I did two verses and then I went home. And when I went home, he called and said, yo, the song you were doing last night, I could hear it in my room across the wall. Okay. I beg, I want to do a verse on it. And because I wasn't too sure about the song, I was like, oh, if it's a nice verse, I'll keep it. Okay. So he did it and I liked the verse when I heard it the next day. So I kept it on there and then we put the song out. And, and it blew up. It blew up. So I said, okay, let me help my next door neighbor also blow up. So when I was doing shows, he would, he would come with me. He had like two songs that people didn't really know, but he would come in and do the song. And then I bring him on to do the verse on the Vera. So then I shot the first video for him, mm -hmm. signed him on to the label, shot a second one, third one. And then um, he also. Blew up. Blew up. So then, then Breezy was also in, in the picture, and then I brought him, like, all my celebrity friends, I brought them to come record with him. So Castro came, did Sai Hall. I did, uh, I brought DeVito, we did a song with DeVito. And then he did Tonga for Joey B. Yeah. He did Selfie for VVIP, Shilele for EL. Then he won Producer of the Year, the yeah. year after. So then that's, that was Black Avenue's uh, inception. And then... Um, all these things happen, and then two years ago, he was like, yo, why don't we expand? Let's bring in like five, six artists, help them blow up, mm. you know, and create jobs for the team. So I said, okay, cool. I mean, I have I have a lot of people, I, I'm friends with people I grew up with okay. that I'm making money from the industry, but um, we, could, we could put them on as road managers, they could learn the job, and everybody could make money, you know? Yeah. The, the producers will make money, the artists will make money, the label will make money. And I like helping people anyway, so let's do it. So we started picking like different people to help and setting different structures. We created a whole office, set up and everything. And then we started again. We brought in about six people. Mm. And then started off as a label. Describe the process of, um, in hindsight, do you think signing off, signing on so many people at once was the best thing to do? Okay, so because I wanted to treat them all like separate entities. Mm. Me, my contribution to this to the label was just personal financial investment. Okay. I wasn't a manager for anyone. Okay. So you could be in different parts of the country. It was just that umbrella that was over you. Ah. So it was like everybody had their team and was going that direction. You know, but I I always felt like if Quissy was about to release a song. I'm not sure be releasing a song the same week or two week mm. period. So let's all just help Chrissy's song blow. Okay. Then when it's your time to release, he and everybody else will support will it. Help okay. your song blow. But then I, along the line, I realized that people didn't want to do that. Everybody wanted to focus on most people or half the people. They want to do. They want to focus on their selves, yeah. their selves, and push their brands and move at a certain speed. They didn't want to wait for someone else to catch up to, with them. No, no, or somebody to release their song and let's help you push your song. Then before it, nah, people, a lot of some of them didn't want to do that, and then they expressed that. And I said, this is what this is. This is Black Avenue. This is what we do. We support each other and we push each other. So if you if you can't rock with it, it's fine. So how many people are now currently on the label? Four. Okay, so two left. No, Who are these? So four people left. Well, we started with six, and okay. we added two. Okay. Yeah, so four. So half the team is gone. Okay. 
The other half is still there. So who are currently with you? So Sefa. Um, she has a really big song now. I like Sefa, yeah. Her yeah. songs are cool, yeah. Yeah, they're more than cool. <laughs> yeah, Sefa, Sefa's doing really good now. She is, she is. And then um, there's two artists that we didn't get to, to, to outdoor okay. properly, Osayo and Nina Richie. And um, we're going to put that stuff out a okay. bit later. Our focus is on Sefa now and then Miss Fortune. Okay. Who stuff is coming out this month. All right. Yeah. So did you take it personally or were you taken aback when the other four decided to walk out? Um, actually, I didn't take it personally for some of them. You know, some of them I had known even before, mm. you know, um, signing or investing in them. And I known them through like their their friends. Okay. So I looked at it like your friend gave you an opportunity. So it's like you're betraying your friend. You're saying you're stabbing your friend in the back because your friend brought you to me. And you're, you're, you're. and then some of them have apologized for okay. taking hasty decisions as well. But it's fine. It's part of it. It's part of the business. We can't we can't all see eye to eye. On, especially when it's your career, you want to take that decision and, and go the direction you want to go. You can't always put your trust in, 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 a, in a company or in a person. Mm. You know, some people can and will work for them and some people will and won't work for them. Who was the biggest shock to you when they decided to walk out? Okay, so to be honest with you, the people that wanted to go and do their own thing, I already didn't want to work with them anymore. Okay. And I expressed that to their managers. So some of them already knew. Okay. So when I said I didn't want to do it anymore, and they said they too, so it wasn't like a shock. Or mm -hmm. Anything, anything was, I didn't want to do it anymore because I, One, I, saw, two, I saw some traits and I saw certain things that I, I wouldn't rock with. Okay. And it wasn't just me. You know, it was, we, we're, we're a big team. Mm -hmm. So if the general manager or label says, we can't work with that person anymore because that or that. And I, I already could tell, you know, then it's a bit. Iffy about it, be staying in the first place. Yeah. Okay. So then if we don't want to do it and then you don't want to do it, then let's not do it. Mm. You know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was, there, was there any of the signees that you took the biggest risk taking on? The person that I've taken the biggest risk on, we haven't put their stuff out yet. Okay. Yeah. What made that person the biggest risk? Because I know the person. Okay, so our industry is very, like we love our own. Yes. And it's very difficult to penetrate the market when you don't have a firm grasp of the local languages. True. So this person doesn't have a firm grasp of the local languages. Okay. But I still said I'd do it. Right. Because their talent is amazing. Okay. Amazing, amazing talent. Well, I look forward to hearing you, you, from this you, person. You'll hear soon. <laughs> There's some songs out there on the internet and stuff, but then we haven't put them out. Boom. Okay. Yeah. All right. He's called Osayo, and he has a song with Safa and a video, everything ready. All right. And when it drops, yeah. I look forward you to understand. it. I look forward to it. Yeah. Now, um, becoming a label boss and as well an artist, has it been easy juggling the two? Not at all. Describe the... Your, okay, so describe how it's like becoming the boss and the structures or how you make it work juggling not only being a label, label boss, being an artist, but also being someone in charge of hospitality and owning a large... Organizations such as that. Okay, so imagine that you're the CEO of a label, mm -hmm. and there's two hundred thousand in their account. Okay. You have to sign checks out to invest in artists on the label, including okay. yourself. Okay. And you know that if you sign a check of fifty thousand for your music, yes, to shoot a video. Promote and go all out for. And you give 10,000 to someone else? No, no, no. That 50,000, you know that when you invest it, 
next month, next two months, you get one show and get that money back. Okay. But then you rather sign a check for an artist who nobody knows. Wow. And you don't know whether you're getting your money back next month, next two months, next year. The person might say, I don't want to work with you anymore after spending that 50000 But you still take that risk. Wow. So you have to be very selfless and say, oh, I'm going to give Sefa 20000 I'm going to give Waisa 20000 I'm going to give this person that. And let's see what happens. The song might blow. The song will blow. You can push it all you can. It might make it. It might not make it. So then you as a CEO, you have to make that decision, not only as a CEO, but as an artist as well. Should you rather spend the money on your video, your music? How do you make these decisions? Hmm. It's difficult. It must. Not an easy hat to be wearing. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Okay. Now, coming to you as an artist and some of the criticism, quote unquote, that has come to you while you've been in the industry. A lot of people have said very disparaging things about your style of rap or the fact that you are not up to scratch or up to someone else's level. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to deal with that sort of criticism throughout your career? Okay, so if you know yourself, these things shouldn't really affect you. Okay. You know, when I started making music, I was doing the whole punchline thing, the metaphors, the double entendre. I'm a, they, I have such a firm grasp of the English language, and some of the artists that are out don't have that. True. So if I had to rap and drop bars, I could do it. I was doing it, and I wasn't making money off it. Okay. It had to come down to a certain level so that everyone, everybody's father, mother, sister, in whatever region, Good whatever guesses. part of the country, would rap along with me. So I'll say, oh, Vera, it be me when you do me like that. And then we'll all sing together. Okay. We'll all rap together, you know. And that's what brought me into the limelight. Now, a lot of people don't listen to the hip-hop records I put out. Mm. And listen to the commercial stuff. And the commercial stuff is the commercial stuff. When you listen to the hip hop records, you, these people won't say what they're saying. Mm. You won't. Tomorrow I put a song out with DJ Black. It's a hip hop song. Okay. You should listen to that. DJ Black. Yeah. Okay, now let's come back because I saw a few headline articles that yeah, said, oh, you were not a very enthused. So DJ Black pulled out his top 50 list. And he doesn't really place you very high. He plays you at number 50. That's and you're very excited about that. That's why we have a song out tomorrow. Okay. Now, describe the, your reaction when you saw that particular list. Uh, I mean, it's an individual's list. Yeah. You know, I've seen MTV's list. I'm number nine. Okay. You know, and DJ Black is DJ Black. He's also, he's an individual. I could create a list. You could create a list. But I looked at the big corporations list, and that made me smile, you okay. know? And that's Africa. So he heard some of the hip-hop songs and he was like, oh my effing God. Okay. Let's do it. Huh. Yeah. Okay, so. So tomorrow, wait for it. It's called Black Friday. I look forward to it. Yeah. I look forward to it. Now, still on the l list. Well, uh, a few, a while ago, MTV Base put out their own list and some people found issues with it. Notably, One Love Kubolo and a bunch of others. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think lists in general are something that we should take with a pinch of salt, one? Or do you think some people are just n not fans, so you don't really take their comments? No, I, I think lists are important, especially for the hip-hop industry. Mm. You don't see them knowing the R&B list. <laughs> well, true. <laughs> or the Afrobeat list. But hip-hop is a very competitive genre. There's battling and there's emceeing and, and, and showing who's the best and, and whose lyrical prowess is, is better than the other. So it's competitive. It's part of the culture. And lists making like the top 10 or top 20, top 30 list is very important for the hip-hop culture. Mm -hmm. Not the other genres, but if you're a hip-hop head, you know that these things are really, really count. Okay. You know, that's why there's always a lot of talk when an individual whose whose opinion is valued puts a list out. Mm. 
mm. or a corporation or a TV station whose opinions are valued put a list out. That's why there's a lot of talk. I don't think there'll be a lot of talk when somebody puts out a high life top, <laughs> you know, because it's not yeah. a competitive genre. Hip hop is the, you know. Everyone goes at each other. Yeah. Okay. You don't hear high life artists battling each other. <laughs> true, yeah. true. I can accept that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to go for another quick break where we come back even more with the man, D. Black, the head of Black Avenue Music, the owner, CEO of Oasis, and uh, the man who has different hats but manages to juggle them all very well. This is Hall of Fame. It's still on uh, Hall of Fame right here on City TV. I'm having a conversation with the Black Avenue Music boss, Dean Black right here on the show and still on the conversation and uh, describe how fatherhood uh, has changed you because you're a great father. I've seen videos how, how you're so cute with your kids uh, and how has how did that change maybe your style of music or maybe you as a person? It, it didn't change the style of music at all. Okay. But what it changed was my um, my drive. Mm. My drive doubled. Okay. Because now you have people depending on you. True. It's not just about you anymore. It's pe people that you're responsible for. So the drive had to double. I had to wear many hats. And these hats that I had to wear was because I had brought kids into this world. And this started long ago. Mm. So I'm looking at my experiences. You know, I grew up in a home where my father wasn't around much. Yeah. You know, so in my head, I'm not around as much, <laughs> but I want to make up for it. Okay. You know, I want to work as hard as I can while I'm this young so then I can get time to spend with my kids comfortably and not worry. That sounds So good. my drive had to increase. Okay. I had to go harder, harder, harder. Is marriage in the books for you? Yeah, one day. Okay. You just haven't found the one? I wouldn't say that. I would just say at the right time, I'll settle down and get married. All right. So let me ask this question based on rumor. Uh, rumor has it, or a little bit has it, that you at some point in time had a relationship with actress Princess Shinkle, uh, who, who's been in news recently for rekindling some love affair with a uh, <laughs> uh, musician Burner Boy. Is this, or does this rumor have any truth to it? Okay, so, Princess was somebody that I was friends with. Okay. And we worked on a, on a, on a movie project together. Um, I wouldn't say we, we were in a relationship. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a friendship. Okay. It was nothing more than that. Okay. Princess is, uh, she loves attention. And some of these things are just to grab the headlines and grab attention. Okay. You know, I know she's in a relationship now with somebody else. We still not, cool. Not Burner Boy. <laughs> not Burner Boy. No, I know that for sure, sure, sure. Look, we're cool, but it was, it was a friendship. Nah. Okay, okay. That's cool. Uh, now, still on rumors, uh, well, not, not necessarily a rumor, but more of beef, uh, where Tiny said a few things that you had to call him out on. Are you still cool with, are you now cool with Tiny? No, I haven't seen him since then. When I see him, I punch him. Wow. Yeah. There's still animosity there. No, I just feel like punching him. <laughs> he's, he's an idiot. Because okay. he, he does these things and he what's up me. Charlie, how did they talk this matter? If we do song, then take hype. Wow. Yeah, and he does. This is like the second or third time he's done it. So he just uses your name for clout? It's, I think it's immature at his age. You know, but yeah. And if he says I'm lying, I still have the messages on my phone. Okay, so you yeah. have the receipts to just read yeah. you with. Uh, what's your opinion on beef in general? Uh, do you think it's a healthy part well, if used in the right context or if between the, the people of who are hoping to keep it on a certain level, is it mm -hmm. a healthy part of the industry yeah. or is it something that should be discarded? No, it's, it's a healthy part of the hip-hop industry. Okay. You know, beef generate streams and sales and relevance and 
all that, all that is part of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Not the music industry, the hip hop music industry. You don't see Afro beats. Actually, actually, it's actually transcended from just hip hop. Yeah, into it's gone everywhere. Yeah, and it helps both parties when it's kept at the music. Okay. No violence, no physical altercations. You know, when it's kept at the music and the fans. I say my guy's the best, and this one I say my guy's the best. It's interesting, it's fun, you know, till it gets physical and then. And then it just mars uh, everything. We don't do that. Okay. Well, I wish we could go on and on and on, but my time is up. So we're going to go into something I really like called the game section. Uh, today is going to be really simple. All I'm going to do is mention uh, name, places, things, and then you would randomly reply. Uh, with the first thing that comes to the top of your mind. But before I go into that, quick question. What are your th your thoughts on the... Do you think the industry is adequately supported by government? No, 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 it's not. What, why? Or why do you think that is the case? I don't know why the government isn't supporting the, the music industry. However, I know that the bodies that are responsible for making these things happen are not doing their job. Mm -hmm. There's promises that music has made about setting up a royalty collection society to properly regulate the royalties that artists and producers get hasn't been done. This mm -hmm. promise was made to me like eight years ago. Wow. Of the Ministry of Finance, who bought told me this himself. And this time has ended in zero. Wow. It's not happened. We don't get any, any, any financial backing from government. I remember they gave Musica two million uh, Ghana cities. And Did you ever see a penny of that? Zero. At that time, dollar was two to two, so it was two million dollars. Hmm. We don't know what they did with the money. I read somewhere that they said they used one million for uh, research. Wow. That's bull crap. That's that's rubbish. Research. When our music can't even cross the boundaries of Africa. Hmm. You see how the Nigerian government supports their people. Yeah. See where their music is going. True. Now, it's each man for himself here. There's nobody supporting us. Shantawali's supporting himself. Sakwadi's supporting himself. Stormo, so everybody's supporting us. Everybody's thinking about themselves. But there's a union that's supposed to be supporting us too. And what are they doing? Nothing. I hear they're doing elections. Elections for what? What's the president going to do? Hmm. Before, before, before our, our, our presidential elections, our president said, I will support the creative arts and doing yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Who's followed up on it? Who's supposed to? It's the Musicians' Union, right? They haven't. Nothing is going on. How have they supported our, 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 the, the arts? In no way, shape, or form. Hmm. Okay, okay. I, I wish I could go on with that, but I'm going to have to go straight into my game section. <laughs> uh, what I've, I'll mention the first thing that comes... Please mention the first thing that comes into your mind when I mention any, a random list of things. I will start off with Black Avenue Music. Be Black. Okay. Uh, Oasis. Fun. Ah, I like. Waisa. Controversial. Mm -hmm. Ingrid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then Alcofado. President. John Mahama. Hmm. Ex president. <laughs> yeah. He seemed like you wanted to go for another one. I wanted to say guinea <laughs> fowl. <laughs> okay, musical. Rubbish. Uh, wow. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, moving into hospitality. I'm supposed to, a word? Yes. Hotels. Twitter. Interesting. Instagram. Very interesting. <laughs> Family. Love. Music. Love. And on that note, thank you so much for coming, Foodie Black. That thank was a very too. insightful in interview. I, I, I had fun. Thank you. It's thank nice you. to finally get you here. We should do this again. Anytime. Yeah. And I hope you enjoyed it at home. This is what another exciting edition of Hall of Fame right here on City TV. And thank you so much for watching. And as well, thank you to my 
team, glam team, I'll be specific. Uh, first choice for my lovely hair, R. Louis for my outfit, and also Kimimi Fabrics for the lovely fabric as well. Uh, I'll be back your way next week with another fantastic edition of Hall of Fame. Until I come your way again, keep watching City TV. <laughs>